qualitative analysis question from may june 2014 variant 33 in every question of qualitative analysis they ask you to test whatever is given and record the details like the color changes seen the formation of precipitates and the solubility of such precipitates in the excess of reagents added also where the gases are released they should be identified by a test and you have to write the test yourself because you will not be given the idea that this reaction or this uh, test which you are doing uh, will give you any gas so you have to identify if any gas is liberated you have to identify the gas with a positive test then in this question we never perform any additional tests of ions because the, the the question says whatever has to be done the question tells you this so now in this question they have given us fa4 5 and 6 solutions and each solution contains one transition metal ion and one of the solution also contains ammonium ion so in this way we have four ket ions present one is ammonium in any of these three solutions and one of the cation in each of these so three those cations and one ammonia makes four cations in total present in all these three fa4 5 and 6 solutions all the cations are listed in the qualitative analysis notes on the last page of the paper so here we have the last page and here they give you the table which is, says cat ions should be tested and positively identified in this way and N ions should be tested and positively identified in this way and the test of gases are also given if there is any gas liberated. Now let's start the experiment in which we have Fa4, 5 and 6 solutions given and here we have Fa4, 5 and 6 solutions and these bench reagents like sodium hydroxide, aqueous ammonia, silver nitrate and this is a purple solution of KMnO4, potassium magnate 7. Litmus paper, test tube holder and a Bunsen burner. So now in the first test we have to take one centimeter depth of Fa4 in a test tube and add Fa1 aqueous potassium magnate 7 which is purple colored solution presented here and this must be added drop wise so now let's add these two first of all we will take this test tube and we will add one centimeter depth of fa4 so here is your fa4 and it's approximately one centimeter depth now we will add aqueous potassium magnate from the wall so that we can see if there is any color changing so we have added from the wall you can see if it is going from the wall we can see it's purple in color and we have added few drops and now we will see and the solution turns purple it means there is no change happened to the potassium magnate solution now we will record this here that purple solution remains unchanged so this purple solution remains unchanged or we can say that there is no reaction happened now we will do the same test with fa5 take one centimeter depth of fa5 in our test tube and add fa1 that is again potassium magnate 7 drop wise so now we will take fa5 one centimeter depth here is our fa5 and we will take one centimeter of the solution And now it is approximately one centimeter now we will add aqueous magnate 7 drop wise again we will tilt the tube a bit so that we can see if purple solution is going what is the color change coming up now you can see purple solution drop wise if it is going 
it is turning to brown the solution is turning into brown precipitates now we will record this observation here that the purple solution turned brown precipitates so we have recorded this observation that purple solution turned into brown precipitates now we will do the same test with fa6 we will take one centimeter depth of fa6 in a test tube and add one fa1 which is aqueous potassium magnet and that is again drop wise so now perform this test we will take one centimeter depth of this fa6 solution And now we will add again with the wall, we will add potassium magnet solution. As soon as it is going into the solution, we can see that it is decolorizing. So the last test resulted in decolorization of potassium magnet 7. So now we will write here purple solution decolorized now the next part says state which solutions contain ions which have been oxidized now potassium magnate 7 is an oxidizing agent if it changes its color from purple it means it is oxidizing something so now in the first case it hasn't changed its color so it's not oxidized means fa4 contains a cation that is not oxidizing Whereas in FA5 and 6, we have seen a color change is coming up. That is purple solution turned into brown precipitates and purple solution decolorized, which means potassium magnate has oxidized the ion present in FA5 and 6. So which solution contains those ions which have been oxidized? They are actually FA5 and FA6. So FA5 and 6 contain the ions which have been oxidized now moving on to the next test in the question where they say select a reagent or reagents to identify all the cations present in these three solutions and here we have to write the reagents so in order to identify the cations we have studied that two reagents are actually used Number one, aqueous sodium hydroxide and number two, aqueous ammonia. So we will take these two solutions to test this cations. So now aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia are the reagents which are going to be used to test cations. Now carry out the experiments using your reagents which you have written here on FA4, 5 and 6 and record your observations in a suitable form in the space below means here they have given you a lot of space where in this space you have to draw a table where you have to record what is the observation when sodium hydroxide is used to test fa4 5 and 6 same and aqueous ammonia is used to test fa4 5 and 6 so we have to make a per table here which includes all these observations now I have made a table where I will record all the test observations for the cation. Now remember the table is made in such a way that if you are testing any of the chemical like FA4, 5 or 6 for the presence of cations, two reagents which we have selected will be used and they will be tested in this way that first of all we will write the observations of sodium hydroxide addition on a few drops then we will further add the sodium hydroxide in excess and then we will warm the mixture with moist red litmus paper we will see if there is any gas given off why because in the cation in the table we can see in the cation we have ammonium ion to be tested in this way that if you heat the salt solution with aqueous sodium hydroxide it will give you ammonia if ammonium ion is present 
and if it is giving you ammonia ammonia is a basic gas so it turns moist damp red litmus paper blue this ammonia is never tested with aqueous ammonia so in the second reagent we have written here we will not include this observation that it must be warmed it will be just few drops in excess again if we are testing any chemical in continuity like we are doing first of all the fa4 with few drops of sodium hydroxide in the same tube we are using sodium hydroxide in excess and in the same tube we are warming the tube with checking with moist red litmus paper so in this case we will draw a dotted line in between these two why because we are continuing using the solution here in the same solution we are doing this and whenever we are doing a separate test which is with aqueous ammonia we will draw a permanent line which means it's a separate test totally in a next test tube we will do this in the same test tube we will do this now we will test fa4 solution and we will take one centimeter depth of this fa4 of course and then we will test this using sodium hydroxide in these three different steps first of all few drops then excess and then we will warm with moist red litmus paper so here we have fa4 solution we will take one centimeter depth of this solution and now we will add aqueous sodium hydroxide in two different steps number one few drops first and then excess again i am telling you we will add few drops like with the wall and slowly so that we can see if there is any precipitate forming we have this sodium hydroxide added in our drops and see the precipitates are red brown in color formed so with the few drops we have red brown precipitates formed and now we will add this in excess this is the excess of sodium hydroxide and even upon shaking this we can see the precipitates are not dissolving now we will warm this solution using this test tube holder so we will put test tube holder there we will put this and here we will start heating so first of all for that we will switch on our burner and burner is switched on in this way that we turn this knob from here and then we put a flame there and here is the burner started now we will take the litmus paper which is red litmus paper just to test aqueous ammonia we will take just one litmus paper from there we will moist it first how we will moist it we will use this water bottle and we will just put some water there and now it's moist damp red litmus paper you can say moist or damp red litmus paper we will put this damp red litmus paper in this way that we will bend the edges so that it will not fall and now we will heat this by tilting the tube so that the burner will not burn this paper if the solution contains ammonia this litmus paper will turn blue from the center of course from the center because from the edges you can see if it is turning blue from the edges it means for the sodium hydroxide you have added it is turning its color from the walls if ammonia is given off it will change its color from the center because the gas must come up from the center therefore we will look in the center for the color change now we will see the gas is coming up you can see the gas is coming up but it's not changing the color of the litmus paper see the color is same even upon heating the the color remains unchanged therefore we will write this in the observation so we have recorded the observation here with a few drops red brown precipitates and it's insoluble in excess 
and no change on the litmus paper means there is no ammonium ion present. From here, we can conclude that red-brown precipitate insoluble in excess is the only Fe3 plus present in this. So we can write here in Fa4, it contains Fe3 plus. So Fa4 contains Fe3 plus. Now we will do the same with Fa5. We will test it with aqua sodium hydroxide. We will take one centimeter depth of Fa5 again. In a test tube, we will take one centimeter depth of Fa5. And now in this test tube, we will add aqua sodium hydroxide dropwise first. So here is our aqua sodium hydroxide. And here is our dropping pipette. We will take aqua sodium hydroxide and we will add from the wall and we will see the color change. So once we add sodium hydroxide, few drops, we can see white precipitates are forming. And those white precipitates are slowly turning into brown. And if we add sodium hydroxide in excess, like we have added sodium hydroxide, in excess these precipitates remain insoluble okay now let us warm this tube for ammonium ion detection we will put test tube holder here and now we will use a damp red litmus paper so here is our litmus paper we will damp this red litmus paper So it's damp red litmus paper. We will put this at the top of this. And now we will warm this in the burner. Switch on the burner first. So now let us see if this red color litmus paper changes or not. So we can see the bubbles are forming and we can see on the neck of the tube the bubbles are coming up but it has no change on the color of litmus from the center it means there is no ammonium ion detected so we have recorded that fa5 shows off-white precipitates which were turning brown on few drops of sodium hydroxide then in excess those precipitate remain insoluble and there is no change on the litmus paper means no ammonium ion was present now off-white precipitate turning brown so let's see we have here the second last column says off-white precipitates turning brown with air and then insoluble in excess means it is mn2 plus ion present in the fa5 so we will record here the fa5 contains mn2 plus now fa5 and fa4 are detected that they contains these cations now do this for fa6 also so in fa6 again we will take one centimeter depth of solution FA6 in the test tube now we will add few drops of sodium hydroxide and then excess so here are the few drops and we can see that green colored precipitates are forming And if we add an excess, those precipitates are insoluble. We can also see that those green precipitates which are formed 
are turning brown slowly. You can see the precipitates are turning brown slowly. So green precipitates which are turning brown with air and insoluble in excess shows that it contains Fe2+. Now we will test it for ammonium. Again, we will use this test tube holder. We will use a damp red litmus paper. So here is our damp red litmus paper. So here we have to ignite the flame again. Now here is the flame. Now we will warm. Okay, so now we can clearly see that from the center the paper is turning blue and from the corners you can see the paper is red and in the center you can see the paper turned blue means the part which was exposed of the gases turned blue means ammonium ion was present so we have recorded that fa6 has given green precipitates which were turning brown yes it they were not turning quickly very brown but now if we see the test tube which was kept for a few minutes the the top of the test tube shows the brown precipitates are are formed means the green precipitate turned into brown precipitates when they are exposed to air for a bit longer period of time so here we have said the same thing they were turned brown with air and they were insoluble in excess and red brown a red litmus paper also turned blue it means ammonium ion was also present so in this case we have two ions detected number one fe2 plus and ammonium ion so in fa6 we have fe2 plus and ammonium ion now we will perform the same test with aqueous ammonia for all of these three so let's start these tests now do the same test we will say take fa4 one centimeter depth now we will add aqueous ammonia few drops first and then excess so we have aqueous ammonia here we will add few drops first and in the few drops we get red brown precipitates and if we keep on adding in excess the red brown precipitates remain insoluble now we will do this same test with fa5 we will take one centimeter depth of fa5 and we will add aqueous ammonia drop wise so here is aqueous ammonia now aqueous ammonia addition will few drops show white precipitates are forming and those white precipitates are turning brown slowly and if we add aqueous ammonia in excess those brown precipitates remain insoluble so off white precipitates turning brown which are insoluble in excess now the last solution fa6 we will take one centimeter depth of fa6 and we will add aqueous ammonia and drop wise and we will see that it must give you green color because it has detected fe2 plus so here i'm adding to show you the color change it's green color coming up and if we add in excess the precipitates are actually dissolving or not just add an excess so here we have added an excess and we can see the precipitates are on the walls they're not dissolving see 
see the precipitates are on the wall they're not dissolving and these precipitates must turn brown with air because it contains fe2 plus so now we can see the top of the the particles they are turning gradually brown so we will record these all observations here so we have recorded these observations here and now the green precipitates which were turning round with air were not very evident at that time but slowly at as the time passes you can see the precipitates from the top they are turning brown so there were therefore this solution contains fe2 plus now we will proceed with the next test in the question paper now they have said each of the solutions fe4 5 and 6 contains either a chloride or a sulfate ion so now we have to choose a reagent or reagents to identify which solutions contain chloride ions so for chloride ions what we need to see is we need to use silver nitrate which is used to test halide ions chloride ions are tested by silver nitrate solution now the next part is use your reagents to carry out the test on each of fa4 5 and 6 and record your result in a space below so we need to identify the chloride that is why we are testing with silver nitrate first and then we will see the precipitates formed in any of them are they soluble in ammonia or not in order to clarify that it contains chloride or not so first of all we will take one centimeter of all these solutions this is your fa4 one centimeter this is your fa5 one centimeter and this is your fa6 one centimeter now we will add aqueous silver nitrate in all of these three tubes one by one so this is aqua silver nitrate and zero dropping pipe it we are adding drop wise and we will see whether white precipitates are forming or not so when we have added we can see white precipitates are clearly formed and now we will see in the other If we are adding no precipitates are forming and now in fa6 again no precipitates are forming means fa4 contains the chloride ion further we will test with aqueous ammonia and we will see whether the precipitates are dissolving or not so we will put aqueous ammonia here and if we add aqueous ammonia the precipitates are because of fe3 plus giving you red brown precipitates but you can so you cannot see any white precipitates remaining means those white precipitates dissolved and these precipitates which are now formed are because of the cation that is fe3 plus therefore we will say the white precipitates are dissolved so we will write all this information here so now we have recorded that fa4 has given us white precipitates with silver nitrate and those white precipitates dissolved with aqueous ammonia and instead red brown precipitates were formed and no change with the fa5 and 6 upon adding aqueous silver nitrate therefore the chloride ions are present in the solution of fa4 and here we comes to an end with the 15 marks question.